Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick. Southeast Radio. Earlier this year, Stobart Air hit the headlines when the regional airline announced that it was ceasing to trade. But just a few months later, a new Irish airline is on the horizon to take its place. Conor McCarthy from Emerald Airlines joins us now. Connor, Emerald Airlines was recently launched as Ireland's newest airline, but before we take off, I'd like to get an insight into your own background within the aviation industry. Okay, well, I'll try to keep it brief. I'm 43 years in the business. I joined uh, Aer Lingus as an aircraft electrician apprentice in uh, 1978, which is 43 years ago. Um, so I spent a, a lot of time with Aer Lingus, uh, rose to become the chief executive of Aer Lingus Commuter, and left Aer Lingus uh, to join Ryanair as their director of operations and spent five years with Ryanair before going out on my own and helping to start a number of airlines, mainly low-cost airlines such as Air Asia in Malaysia, Air Asia in Thailand, Jetstar in Australia, Viva Airbus in Mexico, and a number of other airlines uh, and clients that, that I served over those years. And um, then in 2009, uh, with the huge recession in Ireland, uh, there was the closure of SR Technics here in Dublin. And I came back to start Dublin Aerospace, uh, which is a a maintenance, repair and overhaul organisation. And we um, started with just 18 people in 2009, And now we have about 450 people based here in Dublin. And last year we started uh, another business in Exeter, Exeter Aerospace. And we have about 50 people there. That brings us up to the current stage, I suppose, where uh, in May 2020, uh, I established Emerald Airlines with a view to competing and tendering for the Aer Lingus regional franchise that was due for renewal in 2023. And it runs for 10 years. And um, we were fortunate enough to put together a very good team, very good business plan. And we were selected by Aer Lingus late last year um, to operate that franchise from 2023. And uh, it now looks like um, we may get the opportunity to do it somewhat earlier, but um, we'll see. And Connor, provide us with an insight into what that franchise actually consists of from Aer Lingus. Uh, basically, that's uh, the Aer Lingus Regional Network, which would include routes from Dublin, Cork and Shannon, and more recently, Belfast City Airport, which connect um, not just the domestic, some domestic points, but also, and to the most part, uh, UK provincial cities. So we're talking about cities and routes like Edinburgh to Dublin, um, Edinburgh to Cork, Glasgow, Dublin, Glasgow, Cork. Glasgow, Belfast, um, and so on. Bristol, Birmingham, Manchester, Leeds, Newcastle, Exeter, Southampton even, potentially. And of course, that franchise was previously held by both Air Arran and Stobart Air, both of whom ran into turbulence in relation to managing those particular contracts. How are you going to take a different approach to that now through Emerald? I think the, the actual franchise... Uh, is a franchise that can be quite successful. Um, Aer Lingus as a brand and as an airline is well regarded and has some really strong pulling power. So with Aer Lingus um, managing the sales channels and the distribution, uh, the key for us is to operate a really efficient service, which um, is true to all the Aer Lingus brand values and friendliness, but also does it at a price which is uh, efficient. So timing becomes very important and the timing of our startup has meant that we've been able to acquire aircraft at about half the price of the historic operators. Um, Getting the right talent is obviously critical and we've been very lucky to uh, be able to hire some of the best talent available, not just in Ireland but in the UK. And as a result of that, we've got some really good people. And even the timing of our acquisition of certain airline systems has been really fortuitous because it came at a time when these companies were not selling many pieces of software. 
So uh, normally we wouldn't be big enough to turn heads, but in this case we've been able to turn a lot of heads and get some really attractive deals. People often say the best time to start a business is in a recession, but probably, from your perspective, even better during a pandemic. <laughs> well, I guess uh, there is there is kind of a deja vu about this one. We started Dublin Aerospace in 2009, which, as your listeners would know, was a, a horrible time for Ireland and a very difficult time for people. And yet we've been able to build a very successful business out of that um, so, yeah, I think timing is very important in business. You've, you've got to know your business. You've got to know what it is you're going to do. You've got to be able to build good teams. But if you, if you get everything else right and you don't get your timing right, it can be a disaster. So, yeah, I think uh, it's been uh, uh, time will tell, but I think we will actually um, prove that it's been a good time to start this business. And of course, while the contract itself starts in 2023, you do have an opportunity to be able to roll aircraft out prior to that. Is that an opportunity you're going to take up? And secondly, have you any concern about load factors between now and, let's say, the end of 2023 as a result of COVID? Yeah, good question. Well, of course, with the unfortunate demise of Stobart, um, largely due to COVID and the, the severe damage it's done to all airlines, Um, That's meant that the Aer Lingus regional network hasn't been served since May this year. Um, So Aer Lingus and British Airways have stepped in to fill some of the gaps, but um, they're using very large aircraft to do the job of a smaller aircraft, such as we would be using. So there is an opportunity there. Uh, We have taken delivery of our first aircraft, and two weeks ago we were awarded are operating licensed by the Commission for Aviation here in Ireland and we're also awarded our aircraft operator certificate by the Irish Aviation Authority. So that means we're now qualified and approved to fly. Uh, at the end of this month, see us get our second aircraft and we've now locked in 10 of our um, required 14 aircraft. Um, we expect to get delivery of them throughout 2022 and as we take delivery, we look at those opportunities and if it looks like it's going to be a good opportunity, we'll take it and we'll run with it earlier. Um, and we do believe that the load factor will be attractive simply because um, the market is bouncing back a lot lot faster than people assumed. And Ireland, UK is, is a very, very strong route network. It's, you know, our, our target market is defined by two key groups. The first group would be the business traveller and the second group is the VFR or visiting friends and relatives market. And they, those routes uh, from Ireland to the UK tend to be quite resilient, those market segments, simply because there'll always be business done and there'll always be family and friends to be visited. So we, we think it's, it's, uh, the timing will be, will be quite good in 2022. And Connor, are your eyes exclusively set now on servicing that Aer Lingus contract that you've won? Or are you also looking beyond that at opportunities to take on similar franchise arrangements with BA and others? We, we've actually already had some you know, early approaches from some other operators. But to be quite honest, our focus right now is in doing the best job we can on the Aer Lingus regional network. We've got a big job ahead of us to do that and we don't want to get distracted. Um, so we'll be very focused on that. Uh, so I suspect it'll be towards the end of 2023 before we can even consider, um, you know, uh, allowing anything else to, to take up our attention. But our first job and our primary job is to really roll out this uh, network for Aer Lingus and to do it the best way we can. And of course, earlier this week, Ryanair warned that customers could expect to see a rise in airfares next year. Is price sensitivity critical for Emerald at this stage? It's it's less it's less sensitive and less critical than for Ryanair. So um, you know, because of the market segment we serve, um, as I say, the business market and the VFO market, those markets tend to be a little less price sensitive, and they're certainly more brand sensitive and timing sensitive. So we don't expect it to be uh, as volatile as Ryanair might find. However, we we would be carefully watching our costs. I mean, our job is to try and make sure that we can provide the very best service we can at uh, the best price we can. So uh, hopefully if we can control our input costs, that we, we don't have to increase fares and people will be attracted to fly with us. They also get to earn their Aer Lingus points when they fly. 
So they, that's quite an attractive scheme now because it's the Avios Point scheme that the International Airlines Group use. So therefore you can use them on British Airways or Iberia or somebody else like that. Connor, finally, in terms of your long-term plans for Emerald Airlines, is it to build it to sell it? Not really. It's a, it's, it's a potentially lucrative franchise and um, I'd be quite happy to develop that franchise to the best of my ability and just continue to operate it. Uh, you don't have to sell a business just because it's successful. And I think more recent studies have shown that a lot of entrepreneurs sell their business a little bit too early. And uh, I certainly don't want to be in that category. Well, if you've just tuned in, that was Connor McCarthy from Emerald Airlines. And I'd like to wish Connor every success with his latest aviation adventure. Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick. Southeast.